Hello and welcome to this feature interview. I'm Kelsey Hubbard. On Friday, the McLaughlin Center for the Arts were serenaded with the sounds of the Canadian Brass, a five-member brass ensemble that has been considered the world's most famous brass group. I have on set with me Jordan Bennett, a sen senior here at Emory & Henry, who was able to have, with a few other students, mm -hmm was able to have a master class with the Canadian Brass. Jordan, thank you so much for joining me on set. Thanks for having me. Uh, so, like I said earlier, it's not your first time here, right. so welcome back. Um, but before I, before I kind of get in about the Canadian Brass, I kind of want to go into uh, you and kind of what, what the master class is. So, so you play the French horn. I do. So there, there's the saying between a few of your friends that, you know, your dad kind of pushed you into playing the French horn and the <laughs> piano. Is, that, is there any merit to that? A little bit, yeah, because uh, my dad was a French horn and piano player for many years, and uh, I guess that was just watching him play growing up that just became the instruments I was really interested in playing. So when it came time to choose my instruments, um, I said, well, I want to play the French horn and the piano. And um, originally my band director didn't want me to play the French horn, but I said, no, I'm going to play the French horn. <laughs> and uh, I did, and he let me do it, and the rest is history. Awesome. So how long have you been playing the French horn? Oh, wow. Eleven years now? That's 10, 11 years. That's a long like that. time. So it's obviously yeah. a lot more than just being here at Emory. <laughs> right. Yeah, I've been playing since I was in sixth grade. That's that's pretty that's pretty amazing. Um, so going, I guess, a little bit further into like a master class. What if one goes into a master class with a group like the Canadian Brass or any group? What can one expect? All right. So basically, when you have a master class, you're bringing in these uh, group of people who you kind of consider like the experts in their playing field or the experts in you know playing their instruments, and you just bring them in and you've prepared some music for them and uh, you're, they're basically just going to sit there and uh, you play for them and uh, they're going to critique you, they're going to give you some advice, tell you a little bit about, uh, like they talked about how we can better communicate as an ensemble, things like that. Um, and then sometimes they'll work, uh, the instrumentalists will work with you individually, take you aside and uh, work on more sp instrument specific kind of stuff. Right, and so how many students were in this group with the Canadian Brass? There were uh, seven of us all told in two different ensembles, so uh, one quintet and then a second quintet. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And so what kinds of things did the Canadian Brass tell you guys that you know you could work better on or just kind of in general? Well, uh, I think their big thing for us was just uh, communicating as an ensemble better because uh, I think they liked our sound, but what they wanted to see was us more getting out of our stands, uh, looking each other in the eye when we're playing, uh, communicating, having a more unified sound with the, within the ensemble. Um, they wanted us to work more on our presentation uh, when we're performing. They want to see, you know, better posture, uh, things like that. And what kinds of things did you did you play? Just one song, or were there multiple songs that you played for them? We played a couple songs for them. We played um, a piece, "Glory Land," which is sort of the uh, anthem of the brass quintet anymore. It's been around the brass quintet for years, and we played some excerpts from uh, "West Side Story" that are arranged for brass quintet. That's that's awesome. Mm -hmm. So um, this is obviously not your first master class. You've also had many master classes, including Rodney Marsalis, who I had on set here. Yeah. So what kinds of differences can you see between the Canadian Brass, how they interacted with you guys, or what they told you versus what the Rodney Marsalis guys told you? Uh, the, they shared a lot of very similar ideas and very similar insights in terms of things they wanted us to be able to do. Like, for example, being able to communicate with each other better. That's uh, one thing we heard a lot from Rodney Marsalis and his group, and we heard that same thing from the Canadian Brass, so that's kind of a constant theme. Um, we did find that the Rodney Marsalis group was maybe a little more uh, interactive with us and was more fully engaged all the time, was more, uh, was more animated and more fun to hang out with maybe. The uh, Canadian Brass are very insightful, but um, they were more I guess professional, very very serious about uh, very serious about their work. Right, and so you obviously went to their their performance on Friday. What kinds mm -hmm. of things um, do they play? Or do they play a wide range of music, or do they play like very s simple things? Uh, they played a huge repertoire of different things. They played everything from uh, some arrangements of some Bach music from you know sixteen seventeen hundreds all the way up through um, some Beatles music. They played Penny Lane, it's one of their signature pieces. Um, and then they played uh, a tribute to ballet, which was kind of their comedic piece. And uh, that sort of featured some uh, interesting interpretive dancing by the ensemble, just kind of as a, a, what they were considering like a parody of ballet almost. And so that was, that was really interesting. They played, um, they played Flight of the Bumblebee, which is their signature piece. And that's just, it's just a technical, it's just incredible how technical right. it is and how well they pull it off. Definitely. So I kind of kind of want to go back to that tribute of, of ballet thing. That was the thing that they did at the end. What what did they give as the reason for doing that? Right before they went on. Uh, well, they just 
Well, the Canadian Brass has sort of made their name by being a comedic ensemble, right? And that's sort of how they've become really famous, is they're playing really serious repertoire, but they're also introducing comedy into their routine, and that's sort of, that's sort of their big thing. And so um, I think the ballet piece they did at the end was a pretty good representation right. of uh, how they want to incorporate really high-quality playing and uh, really serious performance with comedy. And so, you know, we see things like the tuba player dancing around with his tuba and things like that. Um, and so, like I said, they're playing really serious music but introducing a comedic quality to it. Right. And so I guess what kinds of things, how are they different? Because a lot of people have an on-stage presence. It's very, you know, that's, that's what happens. But how is that different, I guess, to who they are versus, for example, the Ronnie Marsalis and their on-stage presence versus who they were? <laughs> Well, we found that the uh, Canadian Brass, they seemed, you know, they were very, they were joking around on stage. They were having just a really good time. Uh, when we interacted with them in the master class, they were very serious. They were very professional about their work, was uh, very interesting. There weren't, uh, they weren't quite as, I don't know, jovial, joking perhaps. Like, like I said, they had a lot of good insights, but just very professional off stage, uh, which was a little different from Rodney Marsalis. And when they came in, they were very, they were very animated with each other and with us. They were sitting there joking around, um, really just wanted to have a lot of fun with us at the same right. time. So, they, like you said, they gave you some, some things to, to think about. Do you think they were helpful and that will make you better as a group in the future? I think their insights were good, yeah. They uh, certainly offered up some ideas that we've tried to think about before as an ensemble. And um, yeah, definitely their insights are definitely useful. Right. And so, what kinds of things can we see, I guess, you and, and the brass in general to, to be in the next like, semester? What can we see you guys be doing? <laughs> so, the full band will have a concert coming up, I think sometime in late March, maybe. Um, that'll be a full band concert, and I guess some of the individual ensembles, brass quintet, woodwind quintet, some of the other ensembles will have a concert later in the semester as well. Um, the trumpet ensemble is taking a trip to Pennsylvania in late May. Uh, to perform at the International Trumpet Guild Conference, so that's pretty exciting. Um, but yeah, lots of concerts. The quintet will probably take a high school recruiting tour well, at some cool. point soon. Yeah, lots going on. So can we, I guess, see the two pieces that you worked on with the Canadian Brass? Can we see those in this future? Probably. Probably. We're still kind of solidifying what the repertoire will be for that concert, but it's possible. Right. Well, Jordan, thank you so much for taking the time to come on set, and I, I wish you the best with your French horn and, and your, the brass in the future. Well, thank you very much. Uh, this has been your feature interview. I'm Kelsey Hubbard with Jordan Bennett. Now on to Out and About.